Alright, in this video, our objective is to describe friction and identify factors that determine the friction between two objects. So first, let's go over the definition of what friction is. Friction is the force two surfaces exert on each other when they rub against each other. All right? There's two things that take place when two things that can change or affect friction. One, the types of the surface rub involved, okay, between rubber and say sand or rubber and cement. Or two, how hard the surfaces are pushed together, whether they're lightly being rubbed against each other or they're very hard. Okay? Those two things affect friction and how friction plays a role when in uh, affecting an object's motion. There's four types of friction. Starting off with the uh, the one we deal with a lot, especially you walking. Sliding friction. Two solid surfaces slide over each other. If we take a look here, just to get an idea, sliding doesn't mean that it needs to be an ice skate over a nice rink. It just get the idea that again, it's a solid surface of the blade going over the solid surface of the ice. What we need to make sure to remember is that friction acts opposite the direction of motion. So if the ice skater is going this way, the friction is pushing opposite to it. If they were pushing the same way, the ice skater wouldn't go anywhere. The friction of the ice skate pushing backwards allows the ice skater to move. Right? Another type of friction is static friction. Static friction is what happen is the friction between two objects that are not moving. So objects at rest, not moving, staying in their spot. For instance, a koala in a tree. Why does the koala stay in the tree? It's got its claws out, it's holding onto the tree, but the friction between its claws and the tree, the static friction, is what allow the koala to just sit there. Same thing if you were to take a bottle of lotion or anything else. If you put it on the table, it's going to sit there motionless. It has static friction taking place. If static friction wasn't there, this would simply just fall right off. Another type of friction that we look at is fluid friction. Solid object moves through a fluid. Now you need to remember that fluids such as water and air are materials that flow easily. So fluid isn't just something you drink. Air is actually a fluid. It takes the shape of the container that it's in. So if we're looking at this example here, a hot air balloon. The friction that acts on a hot air balloon when it's in the sky is fluid friction, the air resistance to the motion of where the hot air balloon wants to go. A fish, just give you the sense that fluid fr friction, solid object moving through a fluid. A fish swimming in the water, the water acts as friction against the fish, and vice versa. Last type of friction we deal with fluid rolling friction, I'm sorry. An object rolls across a surface. The object doesn't have to be round. For instance, an apple. Okay, an apple isn't perfectly round, but if it's falling down a hill, it's in a rolling motion. The direction of the motion, again, is facing this way. That's where the apple's rolling down the hill. Versus friction is opposite to the direction of motion. If we take a look at an example of a car, right? We know wheels are round. We can see the rolling friction that way. The direction of the car is this way, however the friction is opposite to it. Therefore, if, I was, if you were to take your foot off the gas pedal, why does your car slow down? Your car slows down because of rolling friction. The friction between the tire and the ground itself uses up the energy of the car moving and therefore slows down. So those are the four types of friction. Now it's your turn to apply. What types of friction occur between your bike tires and the ground when you ride over cement, ride through a puddle, and apply your brakes? So there's three situations going on here. Figure out which type of friction affects these three scenarios. 